Hi, I'm Greg Norton and I'm here to show you Viasat's RF Environment Generation's latest product, the VRG1000. The VRG1000 is a Mark 12A IFF test set used to test IFF radios or platforms containing IFF radios. What makes our product unique is that we don't generate just a single interrogation or a single transpond, but we can generate up to 50 interrogations or 25 transponds. Each interrogator or transponder is placed on an independent platform with its own independent motion models. And then each emitter is also independent in that it can have its own modes. And then the RF is modified, uh, the amplitudes are adjusted, and the delays are calculated based on the separation of the platforms from the system under test. What makes our system unique is that we're not a scripted environment, but we're a real-time environment. We do the calculations on the fly, so we're able to accept inputs from the SUT so that we can use their calculations to make adjustments to our scenarios. Setup for the VRG1000 is very simple. All the software is self-contained within this box. There's a web server, so all you need is a laptop or a desktop, and bring up your favorite browser. Now, for the RF generation, there's two variations of the VRG. There's the basic system like this, which has an RF input and an RF output. If your system under test has a single input output, then we'll put a circulator on the front and generate the RF in and the RF out separately. Uh, and then there's a single trigger for monitoring. A second variation of the VRG is the VRG 1000 SD, which has a sum and difference channel. That'll have a single input output for the sum and a single input output for the difference, and then four monitor ports to monitor the sum output, the difference output, the SUT receive input, and then the monitor cable. The GUI will be displayed on the monitor on my left. Like I say, we'll bring up just a simple browser to show the GUI. And then for a system under test, today, instead of hooking up a radio, we're going to use a Tektronix O-scope. And we're going to project that screen up onto the back. Now, this system won't be able to generate any transponds. And I'm going to generate interrogations. But we will we'll be able to see the RF that's being generated by our system. So two connections, I'm going to hook up this scope to our RF output, and then I'm going to hook up the trigger just to get us a consistent signal. All right, so what I have set up right now is our laptop monitor is being projected to this screen, and then our system under test, which is our O-scope, is being projected to this screen. As I said, there's no software installed on the laptop, so we just bring up our, our browser of our choice. We'll bring up Mozilla Firefox for this. And then I have it bookmarked to the VRG1000. And there's our map. The red airplane will represent our system under test. This is everything that we have in our scenario will be generated in reference to this system under test. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can throw some platforms that are going to be within range of the platform. And then from here, it's just uh, points and clicks. Right click, add a platform. From the platform, Right click, add an emitter. Uh, we can either add interrogators or transponders. Um, today I'm going to show interrogators. Hit apply. And then there's by default our two pulse mode one interrogation. Slide things to the side. This is happening in real time, so as I move a little bit closer, the signal gets stronger and the uh, pulses get a little closer in time. I can go ahead and make adjustments to these emitters. I can go ahead and change modes. So from mode one to a mode two, hit apply. See the pulse separates just a little bit further. 3A, a little bit further. I can do an A only all call, which will add a third pulse. I could do mode S, a couple data pulses, or a couple, a couple header pulses with some data. And then mode 5, 15 pulses with the ISLS off. You have a lot of parameters that you can modify. We can change modes. We can change pulse widths, rise times, fall times. We can adjust the frequency. Uh, we can have a fixed set power. We can have a PGRI modification. We can have rotating antennas, side lobe suppression on or off. A uh, variety of parameters. I'm going to take this simple emitter that we have with mode 5 transmitting. I'm going to take the platform because each platform, each emitter is independent. I'm going to take the platform and give it a little bit of a motion. So give it some speed. 
As you can see, as the platform starts moving closer to the system under test, the pulses are moving closer in time to represent that change in distance. I'm going to give this guy a flight path that's going to be a racetrack so it'll fly in circles so I don't have to keep modifying. The other option would be for me to manually control and make turns on the fly. I'm going to add a second platform up at the top. And I'm going to add an emitter to this platform also. By default, a two pulse mode one. And you can see it's stuck in the middle there, and the signals are garbling over the top. I'm going to change them to a mode five just so we can have more pulses to work with. So we have two mode five interrogators going right now. One of them is moving, it's actually making the turn, so you'll see it start to come back around and the other stationary relative to the set. We move in a little bit closer, take our scope and look at the pulses. You can actually see the garbling. As the signals combined, there's both additions and subtractions based on the phase. If they're in phase, there's additions, and if they're out of phase, there's subtractions. So we get accurate garbling that your, your radio will have to distinguish. Another feature that we can modify to the emitter is the ISLS pulse. So for my mode 5, there's two individual ISLS pulses that will fill into that gap. And as the platform is in beam and receiving the interrogations, the ISLS pulse will be small and the data pulses will be large, indicating that this interrogation is meant for the SUT. As the ISLS pulse gets larger and the data pulses get smaller, then you're in side lobes and then these interrogations are not meant for the SUT. So I'm going to put a main lobe antenna pattern on the data pulses and I would turn sideload suppression on. And we default to a single ISLS pulse. You can see in the center. It's low because the platform right now is pointing to the system under test. So it is in beam. I'm going to go to the mode 5 parameters and put double ISLS pulse on. There's the two pulse ISLS. You can see as I, this is a real-time environment, so as I move the platform, uh, the ISLS pulses will adjust. So as we get outside of beam, you can see the ISLS pulses increase, the data pulses start to decrease. As they get further out of beam, ISLS increases. Eventually the ISLS pulses are large and the data pulses are small. Eventually we'll hit a side lobe where the data pulses actually increase slightly. And then eventually you get into the back lobes and there's no data at all. Now if I wanted, I could take that emitter and display an antenna pattern on it. So now we'll have a line on the platform representing where the antenna is pointing. And then I'm going to go to the uh, menu and I'm going to give the slight rotation, 30 degrees per second, on the antenna. In this case, as you see the antenna rotate, you'll see as we're in the back lobes, there's no transmissions at all. And as we come into beam, first the ISLS pulses will pop up. Data pulses will be small, there's the interrogation, and then back to the high ISLS pulses. So you can see we're accu accurately representing the ISLS pulses. And we'll do this independently for all the emitters in the scenario. Our goal is to provide as close to real life flight testing as possible within your laboratory. So you can set up scenarios with as many platforms as you like, all with their own independent motion models, all with their own independent characteristics. And then when you get a scenario that you like, you can actually save that scenario back to disk and then bring it up at a future time. This will be our dense scenario. This is show uh, the 50 interrogators all with different modes. Zoom out just a bit. Here's uh, 50 interrogators, different modes. You can see the density that we have in our scope. Uh, it would be very difficult for a transponder to sort out all those interrogations. I'm going to show an emitter display showing the different emitters that we have, some in mode 1, mode 2, 3A, some mode 5, A only, and uh, CS only. I'm going to go ahead and take our system under test, give them a little bit of motion. And as I hit apply, you see these pulses all moving independently. They're all relative to how the system under test is moving. So for some platforms, the system under test is moving faster than for other platforms. I'm going to go ahead and give him a racetrack pattern just so uh, he doesn't fly off the screen. Uh, this is the kind of density that we can generate, something that you may see 
probably even greater than you'd see in real life. And you can also see the garbling occurring as we zoom in. There's just a mixture of, due to phase, increases and decreases in the pulses. Okay, for emitter displays, we display all of the emitters, all 50 emitters, with their relative amplitude to the SUT, the number of transmissions that we've created, and the modes. We also can display platform parameters. These are all the 50 platforms, their latitude, longitude, and their relative range to the system under test. If we had an actual transponder hooked up to this system, we would be receiving transponds to our interrogations, and we can display the transponds received, RF in menu. Here's a count of each of the different types of transponds that could be received, and then down below we would see the li scrolling list uh, of the messages received with their data content. Also, on each of the individual platforms, you can open up bubbles to show uh, the status. These bubbles will show the latitude and longitude of the platform, its altitude, its range to the SUT, and also the mode that the uh, emitter would be transmitting on. The system under test doesn't have an uh, emitter on it, so it doesn't have uh, a mode associated with it. And you can put the status bubbles north, south, east, or west. Here's a platform that's actually generating with its relative range to the SUT and its power level and uh, mode that is transmitting, it's mode, transmitting mode 5. As you can see, we have a very powerful system that can be very useful in testing your IFF radios or platforms. We can do simple single interrogation or single transpond testing, or we can do dense testing so that your system can see the effects of being in a dense environment with garbling and ISLS and AOC. Or we can do simulated flight testing with an environment set up for a specific scenario. Or if you have a flight test that you've done and you've seen an anomaly, we can set up a similar scenario so that we can test that anomaly and see if it occurs in our system to ease in your testing.